So um, using the envelope definition um, that Lockwood uses um, uh, for the ellipse, uh, I'm now going to show the that the sum of the distances from the foci to the um, to the perimeter of the ellipse is constant. So that gives you the string construction for an ellipse where you pin a piece of string to two points and then uh, trace round. So uh, let's just start with my circle here. And I'm going to put a point on the uh, uh, there's my there's my focus there, um, and I'm going to put another point on the perimeter of the the uh, circle. And join those things up uh, by a line. I'm now going to create a, a, a tangent from E to D. Uh, it's not a tangent at the moment, but we'll make it one by adding a tangent constraint. And then I'm going to specify this angle uh, to be theta. And we know we know and we showed before that if we come off um, at right angles um, there, this this line df is tangential to my um, ellipse, and the point on the ellipse. Uh, has angle CGD um, equal to theta. Ah, uh, Web is not predictable what uh, one is going to um, uh, want to constrain. Um, so I'm going to call that one. That one's going to do pi minus theta, isn't it? So Point G is on um, the ellipse. Now the other focus uh, can be obtained by coming in coming back perpendicular uh, to this tangent line F. F. I'm going to go all the way to the uh, the circle for reasons that will be obvious in a minute. Um, let's make that perpendicular, and we can get the other focus by intersecting that line with the um, x-axis there. Uh, so there we have that and we can join i to g and what I want to show is that cg plus gi is constant. Well what I can do is I can take the point c and reflect that in the tangent here. And then I'll do a couple of things. I'm going to join J up to C. And I'm going to join J up to I. So this is joining J up to the two foci. Now you'll see that it's lying on top that J I passes through G. Um, now you can use the angles uh, uh, to show that. It happens, or we can do it in GX web by asking for the distance um, between G and IG. Uh, which is zero. So uh, that's fine. And then similarly, we can ask, uh, we can ascertain the distance uh, between D. Um, well, the D does have to line that because it was a reflection. Um, seems the deflection and it's a perpendicular, so it's pretty easy to determine that. Now, um, I can geometrically um, if I join D up with H, uh, it looks fairly clear that this, uh, what we're looking at here is a parallelogram and I'll leave it to you uh, to go through and, and prove that. But given that, that says the, the length of this line here um, is in fact going to be uh, twice the radius of the circle. 
And let's just check that that line, um, let, well, it's a, it's a symmetry, there's a rectangle sitting here. So the, uh, the um, uh, center of the uh, other rectangle is going to go through the center of the circle. So it's, it's pretty clear. Um, so yeah, so work out that um, using the, the simple geometry here, that this is in fact a parallelogram um, dj i h and therefore and that d h is a diameter of the circle so therefore i j is going to be constant but i j uh, this and this are symmetrical because it's a, because j is the reflection of c in the line d f so that gives us that i plus g uh, i g plus g c it's going to be a constant, that constant is twice the radius of the circle.